Charles, what are you up to? Oh, man, you know, we got Jim Tomey in here, so we got to let him swing the bat. It's a little rhythm. Look how he holds the bat. Bat head goes through the zone quicker. You choke up, you stay on the baseball. Full potential. We call it the bow and arrow effect. Sean Casey does you love all that. day. He has free hands. His hips get open, but he's also got plate coverage. You see both of our hips, and we'll talk a little bit about that tomorrow night. Yeah. Hips and hands. Uh, yeah, hips and hands, and Jim Tomey and uh, Dan O'Dowd in Studio 42 right now. And, and Dan, where is he? Where, where's Jim? Matty, I'm trying to find him. You know, the offseason is a time when you work hard to get better. So, Jimmy, what are you doing right now? Well, this was a part of my rehab, okay? So, when I used to do rehab for my back, one of the things they did, they gave me resistance bands. And the resistance bands actually would help my hips. Ironically, back in the day, one of the things that Charlie Manuel would always talk about was hips and hands. Do you know where he got that from? Well, I remember you and I talking about it. Did he say Ted Williams was the guy that showed yes. him hips and hands? And we're going to take a look at a video of Ted Williams and you right now. And then you, when we jump out of that, you jump into the hips and hands from Perfect. your standpoint. As you stride, your hands fall back slightly. As you start to move into the pitch, your hips open up slightly, your hands following. As the bat comes through and you meet the ball, your wrists have not broken as yet. Just that impact, and slightly after, your wrists start breaking, and then, of course, the follow through. So, Jimmy, that's exactly what Charlie used to talk to you about directly. So he pulled that then from Ted Williams. Yes, he pulled that from Ted. And then for me, it was like, because, you know, look, look, back in those days, I mean, Charlie loved Ted Williams. He talked about the first thing for, I think the biggest thing was he said, you got to find one or the other first. So for me, I always felt my hands played such an integral part of my hitting routine. So you then wanted to take your hips out of the beginning of your swing? I wanted, I wanted to feel my hands Well, show us how you did first. that. First, so we need some balls here. We okay. need some balls, and then I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna hit on the tee here. But for me, so what the resistant bands do, okay? First of all, they strengthen your hips. But secondly, when I used to put the resistant bands on, they would take the out of the equation of my lower half. So therefore, the only thing that I thought about was my hands coming to. So you basically the, took your legs out of the swing. I, I took everything out because think about it, Dan. When the resistant bands are around your ankles, you can't overstride. Right. So you're staying on your backside. And, and I'm feeling. Band. I wanted to feel my backside, and also I used it. I used it as a as a way of, you know, of, of making sure the one thing that was my strength, Charlie and I always talked, was my hands. So, to me, when you got in trouble is when you, you, over, you overstrided in your swing. Uh, yes. And you started coming forward a little bit out of the core of your body. Yes. And it was so important that if I did not have plate coverage, if I was not on the plate, if I backed off the plate and my hips did fly open, as Ted Williams said, that middle, that middle, middle to outer half of the plate, I was, I was crushed because my hips were flying open and then my hands really sped so up because it, I thought I needed to get there. So instead of saying hips and hands, were, was it more hands first than hips? For me, it would have been hands and hips. But in Ted Williams' book, he talks first. Ironic, he talks about his hips and then his hands. So, Show us what you mean here then. So for me, again, like if I'm hitting, if I'm hitting this time of year, I would do my resistance work and then I'd come to the tee. Was or it tee work toss. or soft toss? It Which would you prefer? It, uh, I would start on the tee. Start on the tee. And then, and then I'd end in soft toss and then BP because then I wanted to have guys throwing to me and, and slowing down my bottom okay. half. Okay, with the tee, since we're on the tee specifically, were you just trying to get your hands to work yep. now on the tee? Yep. Now, you're going to watch as I'm doing this drill. You're going to watch my eyes are going to come to where my hands are. Okay? I, everybody always used to say, Jim, you're looking at your hands. So I'm not really, I'm focusing on the ball, but the first thing I'm noticing is the knob getting to where it needs to be to the catcher. 
And, and so that, you're actually looking at your hands. I'm looking your, at your this knob. part. I'm looking at the bottom, the knob of the bat getting to the catcher and getting to where it needs to be into that slot. So before, you're just, the knob just drops into the slot. The knob you. just drops right in. And, and the first thing for me is, the first thing that moved was my hands because I had them up high. Yeah, so you had your hands a lot higher than what you have right now. So your hands, when you hit in the game, were a lot higher than this. Yeah, and, and, and ironically, all my hitting instructors when I left Charlie, they said, Jim, you don't really practice like you do in the game. So you never practice with your hands up. Not, not extremely high. It was so when I was in That's the game, fascinating. I, I, I yeah. overcompensated, which would get me into the slot of keeping my hands so above the baseball. So you were just trying to get work on in this drill. You were trying to just get your hands in the slot. Yep. Then. yep. With the resistant now. So you weren't striding at all, really. Right. I, and the resistant bands, when you do your when you do your work with them. It's, it's hard. It won't let you get out there quick. Got so it. we'll do a few more just again. Are you working to stay in a certain part of the field or are you just more worrying about where your hand, what, how your hands I'm, are I'm worrying right about getting my hands. So you're not even worrying about ball flight I'm not, I'm here, not worried. The if, if I wanted to approach through the middle, I could do but that. But you're not worried about that at all no, at this No, the point thing in time. for me was at the start of the day, I wanted to see in my mind how my hands felt and if they were electric. So I listened to Cody Bellinger this year, and the one thing that really stood out for him in all of his pregame work is that he always wanted to feel where his hands were slotted at, at yep. the beginning of the day for him. No that was doubt. his whole key for that night. The same way with you. Yes. If, Dan, if, I, if my hands were high and they dropped and my body dropped, I, was, I wasn't connected. Or excuse me, I was connected. I wanted to feel that separation of as my hands dropped when they got to the bottom of the ear, and then they separated. I your felt like I was down. My front foot was down, and I was ready to go. That my hands would be above the baseball on stride contact, and then I would have the right contact angle to the baseball. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable, right there, yes. Jimmy. Great job. Matty, let me ask you a question, buddy. Yeah. How are your hips and hands feeling right now? Uh, well, um, sore. I'm not doing much, but sore. <laughs> Just because, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, hopefully they're feeling a little bit better <laughs> after that demo. <laughs> oh, yeah, they feel, oh, you know what? They do, they feel better. We're